Hello everyone. This yoga class is going to be what I'm calling strictly seated chair yoga. Over the last 10 years that I've been teaching chair yoga, I've always offered seated as well as standing options within the same class. But not everybody wants to stand up for some of those options. Maybe they're having some challenges with their balance or maybe they have an injury where they're not able to stand for some of those poses. So I wanted to show you how we can do a strictly seated chair yoga class that still has lots of different options for you where you can um, make things more vigorous or you can make things more gentle. It's always gonna be up to you. So there's always gonna be lots of options. So the first thing that we always wanna do in any of our yoga classes especially in a chair class, is to sit up nice and tall on our chair. So we have both feet firmly planted on the ground, hips distance apart. And I like to measure that by using two fists side by side, wedge between the knees, and the feet should be just directly stacked underneath the knees. Now relax your hands on your lap or down by your side, whichever you prefer. And let's start to unwind here through the shoulders. That's the wonderful signal to the body and the mind that it's time to let go of the day that we've had. It's time to bring our focus to right here, right now. Now when your shoulders are feeling good and relaxed, let's relax them back and down one last time. Still sitting up tall, still connecting each foot firmly to the ground beneath us. Our sitting bones, if you rock side to side in your chair, those bony rods you feel there, those are firmly planted onto the chair seat. We engage the abdominals open up through the chest and lift up tall through the crown of our head. And let's just start to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. And if those passageways are not clear for you today, please just breathe as comfortably as you can. You're welcome to close your eyes if you'd like to. And as we hear the sound of our healthy breathing, we allow ourselves to let go of stray thoughts, letting go of judgment and competition, even when they're directed toward ourselves, and letting go of our own expectations today, allowing ourselves to see what these bodies can do when given the opportunity. And as we hear the sound of our breathing, we're reminded to breathe throughout each pose. Even when the poses are challenging for us, let's keep breathing rather than holding our breath. And we make a promise to ourselves to listen to the body at all times, easing up when needed and giving ourselves more of a challenge when wanted. Let's take a few more cleansing and centering breaths.
when you're ready, let's slowly open our eyes. Let's bring both hands together at heart center. On the inhale, let's press the ceiling and the floor away with opposite arms. And on the exhale, come back to the heart. Inhaling, pressing away. Exhaling, coming back to heart center. We feel the chest opening up for us, undoing any unintentional slouching we've engaged in during the day, maybe during this week or these months. When we come to our chair yoga or even our mat yoga class, I always like to stress that we should be using our very best posture at all times. And our hope is that we're going to take that outside of the classroom and out into the rest of our lives, practicing our best posture out there as well. One more time, reaching with opposite arms here. Now, let's go ahead and rest the arms down by our side. Let's inhale nice and tall, engaging our abdominals. And on the exhale, a little tea kettle reach over to one side. Inhale, lift, lift, lift with these trunk muscles. And on the exhale, a tea kettle reach to the other side, inhaling and lifting. Exhale, reach on down. Inhale, lift, lift, lift with the trunk. Exhale as you reach. One more tea kettle reach on each side. Now let's place both hands on our lap. On the inhale, press the chest forward with a little arch in the back. And on the exhale, round through the spine and pull those abdominals in. Let's inhale, pressing forward. Exhaling and rounding. So I know you can't really see what's happening behind us, but from the side, it's an inhale with a little arch in the back. Exhale, rounding through the spine. Let's continue following our own breath, using our own pace. Couple more times in each direction. This is cat and cow flow. We're inviting some good lubrication into the spine here. Now let's come all the way back upright. Let's roll those shoulders back and down, sitting up tall, engaging the abdominals once again. Let's inhale our left arm up to shoulder height, watching the tips of our fingers as we gently twist. Inhaling back to the center and exhale, lower that arm down. Let's inhale the other arm up, gently, gently twisting. Inhaling back to the center and exhaling down. Again, encouraging those good lubricating fluids in the body to get into all the nooks and crannies of the spine when we use our twisting poses. One more time on each side, a lateral raise with a gentle twist, inhaling back to the center and exhaling down.
Now let's roll the shoulders back. Let's extend one long leg out in front of us. I'm flexing the foot. I know you can't see it here on the video. And then exhale, lower that foot down. So we inhale, stretch out that leg, straightening it as much as is comfortable, then exhale down. Now the first couple times that I do that, and you may have been able to hear it in the video, I usually have some little sounds coming from the knees. If you're hearing sounds, but there's no discomfort there, then there's nothing to be alarmed about. It's really just air moving at the joints there. If I was extending my legs and there was noise and some discomfort, I would certainly want to ease back or just stop altogether. We never want to be in, a, in an uncomfortable place while we're doing yoga. The things we do here are meant to feel good in the body. Sometimes they're meant to feel challenging, but nothing should ever be hurting. So if anything is uncomfortable in that way, please ease back. Now let's add the opposite arm reaching up at the same time as that leg extends. So we inhale, stretching out the arm and the leg. Exhale, bring it down. This is our spinal balance flow. Sitting up tall, engaging our abdominals. One more time on each side. Now let's just extend one leg and circle at the ankle or maybe wave that foot side to side if it feels more comfortable to do that. Just trying to get some good lubrication around those ankle joints. And then if you're using a circle, let's reverse it. Let's point and flex through the foot, feeling all those muscles at the ankle and in the lower leg stretching out for us. Now let's switch to the other side. Lift the leg, circle at the ankle or wave it side to side. If we're using a circle, let's reverse it. Now point and flex through the foot. Now let's place both feet flat on the ground. Again, hips distance apart. Maybe measure it if you need to. Roll the shoulders back and let's reach our arms down on the diagonal, palms facing forward. Let's inhale tall, engaging our abdominals. On the exhale, we hinge forward with our jet wings reaching behind us, palms down. On the inhale, we lift, lift, lift and raise those arms in front of us. Exhaling as we hinge forward, inhaling and rising tall. This is our airplane flow. So we're using some flowing movements here. So we may start to feel the body warming. That's not a bad thing. Warming the body is a good thing because it helps us get our muscles nice and stretchy, a little more flexible than when they're cold muscles. Two more times. Now let's reach the arms out to the side, palms up. Inhale the arms overhead, swan diving down to forward fold. On the inhale, let's lift the back to a 45 degree angle. The hands are just resting on the lower legs. Exhale, down to forward fold. And on the inhale, rise up with overhead arms. Swan diving down. Inhaling to monkey. Exhaling, forward fold. Rising tall as we inhale. Swan diving down. 
inhaling to monkey, strong backs and bellies, exhaling down, rising tall as we inhale. Inhaling the arms overhead. Now let's scoop up one knee and hug it in close to the chest, rounding through the spine, pulling the abdominals in. And then let go as you inhale. Exhale, another knee hug on the other side. Inhaling and opening. Exhale as you round. One more knee hug on each side. Now let's go back to those seated sun salutations. Swan diving as we exhale. Inhaling to monkey, 45 degrees for the spine. Exhaling down. Rising up as we inhale. Swan diving down. Inhaling to monkey, exhaling forward fold, rising as we inhale. One more seated sun salutation. Now this time we're gonna pick up one leg and just step it over to the side and then bring it back in as you exhale. So inhale, pick that leg up as high as is comfortable to step out, then exhale back to the center. Inhale, stepping out. Exhale, bring it back. Maybe think about stepping over a flower in your garden here. One more time on each side. Just a nice way to practice opening up through the hips and then bring it on back. Now, if you have a drink, now is the time for you to go ahead and take a couple sips. Definitely wanna stay hydrated during your practice. So let's go ahead and slide forward on our seat here. And let's take a wide stance with our feet. And already you may be feeling a little bit of hip opening work here. And that's a good reason to use these wide open stances. So let's go ahead and inhale the arms up to a star pose. And on the exhale, just bring those elbows in toward your ribs. Inhale, reach for the corners of the room. Exhale, bring those elbows in. This is called Moonflower Flow. So we have the good hip opening with our wide stance. We're still continuing to warm the body with the flowing movements in the arm, and we're keeping our chest nice and open, which is again, undoing any slouchiness we may have participated in this day or this week. You might even wanna think about when you bring those arms down, maybe your elbows are just slightly behind you just slightly. So you're nice and open through the chest here. Couple more times with moonflowers. Now let's make a change here. Let's inhale the arms overhead, hinge forward like you're picking up a big pumpkin here. And on the inhale, rise up tall. Exhale, gather up that pumpkin. Inhale and rise up. So now we're bringing a little bit more of those 
lubricating fluids to the lower back, but we can also feel a little more uh, intensity in those inner thighs as we hinge forward as well. Just a few more times hinging forward here. This is called hinging sunflower flow. Last time through. All right, now let's bend the left forearm and lean over to the side for a side bend, then rise up on the inhale, exhale over to the other side. Inhale up to a star, then exhale into a side bend. One more time on each side. Now let's bring those arms down. Let's kind of duck walk the feet back to a um, hips distance apart stance. Let's roll our shoulders back and down here. Now let's take our left arm and reach across the chest. Use your right arm to hug it in close. This is called half knot. So we're still sitting up tall, using our very best posture, engaging the abdominals, feeling that nice stretch through the back of the shoulder here. Now let's relax that half knot. Bring your right arm across the chest, hug it in close. Now let's relax that arm, reaching back with both arms. Imagine that you're holding on to a big beach ball behind you. So you've got this nice opening through the chest, a little bit of an arch in the back. This is chest expansion pose. Two more breaths. Now let's wrap our arms around a big tree trunk, give it a hug, round through the spine and pull your abdominals in to support the back. open up here, rolling those shoulders back and down. So we're going to get ready to start with our warrior poses. So I'm going to turn my chair sideways here for a moment. Um, I'm going to offer lots of different options depending on what is most comfortable for you. So let me just adjust my chair. I'm just going to turn it here to the side. Now, in our chair here, you can sit up nice and tall. And one option here, I'm starting here with my legs hips distance apart. So one option for warrior one is to take, let's say we'll start with our right foot and we'll just step that right foot out to the side just a little bit. So I'm making a V shape with my legs. That would be our first option for the legs in warrior one. The second option would be to take that right leg a little bit further and take it all the way over to the side so that I'm making an L shape with my legs. 
And the third option would be to slide over a little bit on my chair, sliding toward the right side of my chair. I'm gonna take this right leg and just slide it back. So my, my knee can be pointing down toward the carpet, or I could stretch that leg way, way back so that my toes are on the ground, but my right leg is as extended as it can be behind me. So that would be another option here as a seated version of Warrior One. So now I'm looking straight ahead, my hips, navel, shoulders, head, everything is looking forward. So now I'm thinking, well, what do I do with my hands? I can have hands on hips. I could have prayer pose. I could use cactus arms if I'd like. It's all going to be your preference. So whether you have V-shaped legs, L-shaped legs, or you have long a long leg out behind you, Use whatever options you like for your arms in Warrior One. So we're looking straight ahead into the distance, engaging the abdominal muscles. Breathing rather than holding the breath. One more breath. Now let's bring our arms down. Now, if you have one long leg, your right leg extended behind you, in order to go to warrior two, which is our next pose, all I'm gonna do is turn my chest toward the right side of my chair and just kind of turn that back foot from being on the toes to leaning that right foot on its side. So now I have more of an opening through the hips here, and I'm gonna look out over my left middle finger for warrior two. Now, if I have L-shaped legs, and I started here in warrior one, all I'm going to do is turn my chest toward the right side of my chair. So now I have a little twist here happening in warrior two. And the same thing if I have V-shaped legs. V-shaped legs where I was facing forward, now I'm just turning my trunk to turn it toward the side. So whichever version you're using, we're gonna try to look out over that left middle finger for warrior two. Hearing the sound of our healthy breathing. Now let's turn that left palm up toward the sky, reach forward to serve your friends, then tilt the upper body back. So the left arm is rising. The right hand is either just reaching down toward the ground, if you're in V legs or L shaped legs, or it could be resting on your leg if you have that long leg stretched out behind you. This is Reverse Warrior. Now let's come back to Warrior Two. Relax those arms and just bring your feet back to hips distance apart right in front of you. Now we're going to just extend our legs long. So I'm resting my heels down on the ground. I'm sitting near the top of my, or the front of my chair. I'm gonna reach out with both arms in front of me and I'm gonna stack my left hand on top of the right. And then as I inhale, I'm gonna lift those arms up overhead, maybe right next to my ears like they're earmuffs. This is our seated version of downward dog, stretching through the spine, engaging those abdominal muscles.
Now let's bring those arms down. Bring both feet back down to the ground, hips distance apart. Now, in order to do my warrior poses on the other side of the body, the only thing I need to do is just switch which legs I'm using. So now, as I sit tall with my feet hips distance apart, I have my choices. I can take that left leg and just step it out a little for V-shaped legs, step it out more to the side for L-shaped legs, or I could scooch over toward the left seat, the left side of my chair, and I can either slide that foot back so that my left knee is pointing toward the ground and my toes are connected to the floor, or if it's comfortable, I might stretch that leg further back so that I'm extending through that leg. Now notice, I decided to hang on to my chair here for some extra stability. There's nothing wrong with that, especially when you're sitting near the edge of the seat. Now looking straight ahead in Warrior One, again, choose any hand options you like. I'm holding on to my chair, so I'm gonna use half prayer pose. Everyone's engaging their abdominals, looking straight ahead into the distance with a soft gaze through the eyes. Now from here, we're going to turn to warrior two. So we're either just turning through the torso, or if you have that long leg behind you, you're making that little shift where the leg is now sort of laying down on its side on the ground, looking out over the right middle finger. Warrior two, we get that nice opening through the hips here. Now let's turn that right palm up toward the ceiling, reach forward to lengthen the spine, then tilt the upper body back into reverse warrior. Right hand rising, left hand is resting either on that extended leg or just reaching down toward the ground if you're using L-shaped or V-shaped legs. Reverse warrior. Now let's come back to warrior two. Bring those feet forward when you're ready. Relax those arms and come back to feet hips distance apart. Now let's first scoot forward on the chair, extend those legs long so that your heels are resting on the ground, the toes are flexed, the feet are flexed. Reaching out through both arms, let's stack the right arm on top of the left, inhale, Bring those arms up for your downward dog in a seated position. then bring those arms down, relax, bring those feet back down to the ground, make sure they're hips distance apart. Let's inhale both arms overhead, swan diving to a forward fold. On the inhale, we lift to monkey, exhaling forward fold, rising tall as we inhale, swan diving down, inhaling into monkey, Exhale, forward fold, rise up on the inhale, swan diving down.
One more time using our sun salutation here. Now let's bring those arms all the way back down. Now I'm gonna turn my seat again to face forward. So here, we're going to use our pyramid pose. And pyramid is another way that we can stretch out through our long legs. So we're going to slide forward on the seat. I'm gonna keep my right foot flat on the ground, the right knee is bent, and I'm going to extend my left leg. So my left leg is straightened out. I'm flexing my foot, just the heel is connected to the ground. So I'm gonna place my hands on my hips, inhale, pulling in the abdominals, sitting up tall, and on the exhale, we hinge forward from the hip and we start to feel this mighty stretch behind that long leg. This is our pyramid pose. Now on the next inhale, rise up tall. Let's switch sides. So I put my left foot flat on the ground. My left knee is bent, extending my right leg down long in front of me. Let's inhale, engaging our abdominals. And on the exhale, hinge forward from the hips till you get to that good challenging place where you feel that good lengthening of all those muscles from your lower back all the way down to the heel. Now let's inhale, lifting all the way back up. Bring both feet down to the ground. Now let's go ahead and work on our tree pose from a seated position. So right now we have our feet hips distance apart. Now one version of this tree pose, um, we could take the left foot and just cross it over the right at the ankle. That's one version. Another version would have me just take my left foot and sort of rest it on its side right up next to my right foot. Excuse me. So my left foot is resting right up next to my right foot and I'm just keeping a bend in my knee and letting that knee fall open a little bit. So I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit so hopefully you can see a little more what the legs are doing here. So bear with me a moment. Let's try to adjust here. Okay, so again, you can either cross the left foot over the right or just take that left foot, rest it on its side right next to your right foot. And then you'll notice that your, your hip kind of just falls open here, okay? So this is gonna be one of our versions of tree pose. And I'm gonna start off with my hands Press together at heart center in Anjali Mudra or prayer pose. I'm going to engage my abdominal muscles here, sitting up nice and tall. And then another nice option is to inhale those arms up overhead. And you can bring those hands to just behind the crown of the head if that's comfortable for you. Now I know in my video here, it's hard to catch all of the body parts and see everything when we're seated and when the arms are extended. So I hope that you're figuring it all out as we go. Um, I'm hoping my descriptions are being helpful. Now let's bring those hands back down to heart center. Relax the hands, 
bring the feet back to hips distance apart. So this time we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take the right foot though and cross it over at the left, at the ankle. That could be one version of your tree pose. Or again, you could take and lean that right foot over onto its side. It's, it feels like I'm kind of butting the right sole of my foot, the sole of my right foot, right up next to my left foot here. And then again, that right hip just falls open and we feel a little bit of a hip opener there for tree. And we inhale, engaging our abdominals, lifting up tall through our leafy crown. You can keep your hands here at heart center, or you can take them up overhead. Maybe just reach them just behind the crown of the head. And then when you're ready, bring those hands back to heart center. Relax, bring those feet back to hips distance apart. Now we're gonna use a little bit of a twisting pose here. So let's take the hands back to Anjali Mudra. Let's inhale, engaging our abdominal muscles, sitting up tall. And on the exhale, starting below the navel, we begin to slowly, slowly twist over to one side of our chair. So think about a barbershop pole and the stripes on that pole. Think about the stripes going from the bottom to the top. That's what we want to feel here in our torso for this seated twist. Breathing rather than holding our breath. Now gently, gently, let's come on back to the center. Let's try it in the other direction. Let's inhale, engaging the abdominals, and on the exhale, twist, 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 over to the other side of your chair. Now gently, gently, let's unwind back to the center, relax those arms. Now, if you have a drink, I want you to take a sip here. Before we go any further, now that I've adjusted the camera, I just wanna to try to show you one more time those different options for the warriors. So here's what our choices are. Remember, you can take this leg and I can move it out just a little bit for V shape. I can move it out more to the side for an L shape. Or my third option is to slide that leg back. So right now my toes are on the ground, but my knee is straight down toward the floor. So that's one option. Or you could choose to stretch that leg out as long as it will extend. The toes are still on the ground. So this would be warrior one with either long leg behind you, V shape or L shape. And then all you have to do to get to warrior two is turn through the torso. And if you have that long extended leg, just go from toes on the ground to laying that foot on its side. Okay? So let me show you what it would look like with V-shaped or L-shaped legs. It would go from everything being forward in warrior one, let's say with prayer pose, and then turning for warrior two, looking out over that long middle finger in front of you, okay? And then the L-shaped leg is the same thing. It goes from here to here. 
So for those warrior poses, I just wanted to point that out one more time. So now with our feet hips distance apart, let's inhale both arms overhead and let's just take a forward fold here. And just let the spine relax, let your belly rest on top of your legs. Breathing deeply. Now when you're ready, engage the abdominals, slowly, slowly rise up and bring those arms all the way back down. Now let's do a little bit of work for the neck here. So let's inhale nice and tall through the crown, engaging our abdominals. On the exhale, let's turn the head to look out over one shoulder. And on the inhale, I want you to look up on a slight diagonal as a bird looks out of its nest. And this time on the exhale, let's draw a semicircle down by the chest. On the inhale, we're lifting, lifting, and looking out of another bird's nest. Exhale, draw that circle down by the chest. Inhaling, lifting, lifting. Exhaling, lowering down. One more time on each side. And then gently just turn the head back to the center, rolling the shoulders back. Let's reach back behind us into that beach ball hold for chest expansion. If you're in the vicinity of your chair frame and you want to hold on to it, you're welcome to do so. Keeping the chest nice and open, feeling that little back bend. Now let's wrap our arms around a big tree trunk, give it a hug, pulling those abdominals in to support the back as it's rounding. Now let's open back up, roll those shoulders back. Now let's slide forward toward the front of the chair and let's bring the soles of our feet together into a butterfly pose. And naturally, the knees are gonna open up for us and we're gonna get a nice gentle hip opener. This is our butterfly pose. Now we wanna keep the abdominals engaged. We wanna also stay stable on the front of the chair. So what I like to do here to be extra safe is roll the shoulders back and hold on to my seat. So it adds a chest opener, but it also adds some stability here at the front of your chair. So let's breathe into butterfly pose, allowing those hips and those knees to relax and open up as far as they want to open today. Butterfly pose. Now let's relax the hands. 
Bring those feet back to hips distance apart. Scooch back a little bit in the chair so that we're in a more sturdy, secure spot. Now we're gonna do a seated spinal twist here. So let's start with our left hand resting on top of the right knee. Let's inhale, sitting up tall, pulling in the abdominals. And on the exhale, we begin to twist, twist, twist over to the right side of our chair. Now, you might have your right hand resting on your right hip. You might hold on to the chair frame. Or if you want to get a little deeper, you might hold on behind the seat of the chair. So think about what is feeling good and challenging for you, but without discomfort. Now, gently, gently, let's unwind all the way back to the center. Let's take our right hand and rest it on the left knee. Let's inhale tall, engaging the abdominals first. Then on the exhale, we start to twist. Decide where you want to rest that left hand, on the hip, on the chair, on the back of the seat. Listening to the body at all times easing up whenever we need to. Now gently, gently, let's unwind all the way back to the center. Now before we take Shavasana, I thought we would use a little facial yoga. So we're gonna take our hands in front of us for fluttery fingers, and I want you just to tap, tap, tap right toward the middle of the forehead at the third eye there. Stimulating the third eye, which is that space above the space between your eyebrows is supposed to help bring a calm and peaceful feeling to the body and the mind. Now let's just gently tap, tap, tap down around the temples. Tap, tap, tap underneath the eyes here. Tap, tap, tap right up through the bridge of your nose. And then moving down the jawline here, tap, tap, tap. And then we're gonna just sweep up the forehead Gently, gently with the palms of your hands, just sweep up the forehead and then sweeping up the neck. Sweep up the neck. And then with our two first two fingers of each hand, we're gonna reach behind the ears at that bony place, right behind the ears, and we're gonna just rub in a circular motion. Then I like to reverse my circles, just massaging that bony spot there. Then you might want to just get into the scalp here, kind of massaging at the scalp, wherever feels good for you. Just giving ourselves a little massage care. And when we're ready, let's go ahead and just relax all the way back into our chair. 
When I sit back in my chair for Shavasana, sometimes I like to use butterfly legs, uh, whatever feels comfortable for you. Now for Shavasana, which translates to corpse pose, the only thing that we are required to do is to be still and quiet and peaceful. And we try to quiet our mind as best we can. So let's try to do that. And if we have thoughts come into the mind, acknowledge them briefly, and then let them float on by like a cloud in the sky. You're welcome to close your eyes if you'd like to. And when we're ready, let's begin to slowly awaken these bodies from their balancing, mindful rest. Let's start to gently bring small movements into our fingers and our toes, gently, gently waking them. And let's begin to breathe a little more deeply, breathing that waking energy that we've created here together today back in to fill all parts of this physical body, from the soles of our feet all the way up through the crown of our head. And we find our hearts are shining with gratitude today, grateful for this shared practice, grateful for all of the many ways that this body can move, and grateful, as always, 
for this body and this breath that carries us everywhere we go. Now when we're ready, with our eyes still closed, let's bring ourselves back to a seated position where our feet are hips distance apart. Let's bring the palms of our hands together at heart center, and we'll start to rub those hands vigorously, warming them. And we'll use these warm hands to gently cover our closed eyes. And that wonderful heat that we find radiating there is inviting our eyes to slowly open and we bring our hands down to rest upon our laps. Clear minds, kind words, compassionate hearts. Om Shanti 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 Om Peace, Peace, Peace. Namaste.